Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. It is the Monday morning, April 26th, Winning Cures Everything podcast. I am your host, Gary. Uh, this I am recording, obviously, on Sunday evening, hence why it is so dark if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, we certainly appreciate you. We will get to all the details, all that good stuff here momentarily, but let me go ahead and give you a rundown of exactly what I am going to be discussing this evening. We are going to talk UFC 261. Chris and I watched this uh, quite a bit on Saturday night, watched the whole main card, had an absolute blast. Uh, talk about a just a ton of holy shit moments. They were all over the place, and it was fascinating. So we're going to talk about the whole thing, what's going on inside of that sport, and uh, and they've got a lot of big stuff coming up. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Chiefs and the Ravens trade, and we are going to talk about Rob Gronkowski setting a Guinness Book of World Records record. Again, we talked about it just a, a a couple of weeks ago, I guess, why anybody would want to do the Guinness Book of World Records, what it means, why, like who who cares. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going to talk about Mortal Kombat. The movie came out this week, so of course I've got to hit that up. And I got an interesting story from Florida about a reptile, an amphibious reptile, I guess. But either way, lots to discuss with that. Before we get started, winningcureseverything.com is the website. Make sure that you go and check it out. It has everything that you need to know about us over there, everywhere that you need to follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. So go and check it out. Also, we have a college football show on Sportsbook Review. Go over to YouTube, search out SBR Picks, and you will be able to find it. It comes out every Wednesday. Very easy to do. The FCS playoffs are going on. I could have talked about that, but we are going to break that down in much more detail on the college football show this week. So you can check it out, sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. Or, again, YouTube, just search out SBR Picks. You can find it right over there. Very easy to do. And, of course, we have to discuss, this is NFL Draft Week, and we have a live draft uh, discussion, reaction, whatever you want to call it, a live stream with our buddies from the Westlot Pirates. Chris has obviously had them on the show multiple times last week. Going to have Scuzz on this week, I believe, on Tuesday evening. So go ahead and check that out, Westlap Pirates. And make sure on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, you are right here on winningcureseverything.com, on the Winning Cures Everything YouTube. And uh, and we will have the podcast up the next morning. It will be a very long one if you want to sit through it, or you can just kind of skim through all that good stuff. I'll try and keep as many timestamps as possible so that you can get to the parts that you really want to hear. But, um, but yeah, it's just going to be a long three-and-a-half-hour you know, everybody drinking their uh, their beverages, all that good stuff. It's going to be a good time. Hopefully, you will join us there. Now, let's go ahead and start off with UFC. UFC 261, and I got to tell you, first things first, 15,000 people sold out in Jacksonville, Florida. It was absolutely beautiful. I did not realize how much I missed having full crowds back for something like that. There is no environment like a prize fight environment, and UFC treats every major pay-per-view event like it, really all of their events, even their fight nights. They are all big-time prize fight type atmospheres, and it is incredible to witness. It's really fun to see in person when they fought at uh, FedEx Forum back, I mean, I swear that's been a decade ago. I was there, saw BJ Penn, saw several others, had an absolute blast. And, and it felt like the biggest thing going on in the world at that moment. And that's how it is for every one of their fights when they have full crowds. The difference between having a full crowd and fighting in, you know, the UFC Apex Center or whatever they call it out in Vegas or, or with basically nobody there uh, at Fight Island on Yaz Island in, in Abu Dhabi, it's just a completely different feeling. And I loved it. This card was awesome. We will start from the main event on down. Um, Usman just knocked the absolute crap out of Masvidal. Never saw it coming. Uh, Masvidal did not. I, I I could have seen it coming. I had a bet on Masvidal, but it was because I got him at plus 310. By the time the fight started, he was at like plus 235, which made no sense because Usman is just a ridiculous fighter. But everybody loves game bread. 
Everybody knows everything about Jorge Masvidal. And, and he got it taken to him in this one. He mentioned after the fight um, that he did not prepare for the power of his fists. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he said before the fight, I mean, it was in all the buildup for it. Gamebred talked about how soft of a puncher Usman was, and he he should have he should have prepped for this a little more, uh, especially after what we saw him do against Gilbert Burns just a, a few months ago. So it, that was obviously on him, but there was there was no built in excuse this go round. Last time, you know, this was a, a rematch. Last time, back a few months ago, uh, six months ago, whatever it was, I guess November, I, I think somewhere in there, October, November. Um, it was it was built in because Masvidal took the fight across the globe on six days' notice because Burns had to drop out. And and it went to a decision. You know, obviously, Usman did not knock him out then, and it was a lot of foot stomping and, and leaning into him on the cage. And, you know, everybody obviously did not like the way that that one went, and, and neither did Kamara Usman. So he definitely, uh, he definitely looked a lot better this go-round. He waylaid Masvidal in his home state, and it was ridiculous. All the boos and whatnot for Usman, I get it. I get it, because everybody saw, you know, he he stomps on feet and all that good stuff, but this man has changed his game. He can fight with you on the ground. He can fight with you standing up. It does not matter. He has got so much power behind that punch, and, and he's ridiculously good. He is strategic. He is uh, schematic. He is an incredibly intelligent fighter, and I don't think people are going to be booing him for long. You know, I, I do think a big part of that was the fact that it was in Masvidal's home state, but look, Usman is a ridiculously entertaining fighter, and I think a lot more people will be cheering for him rather than against him going forward. Uh, Thug Rose, Rose Namayunas, knocked out uh, Zhang Weile, and this is something I did not see coming. Uh, I mean, Weile was or Whaley, however you say it, uh, had not lost since November of 2013. And Thug Rose it just caught her. Um, and it was a perfect move, right? Because it was a, a kick to the, to the face. But she, she juked her because Zhang thought that this was going to be a low kick. She was prepping for that. And as soon as she got shook, this, this is the equivalent of a basketball player juking you into thinking he's going one direction and then switching around the other way. Or, or when you sprain somebody's ankle by, by pulling a spin move. You know, it's the same thing. But, man, she did not see it coming, and she was knocked out quick. There wasn't a single fight on that main card that got out of the second round. I mean, it's just crazy to think about. Uh, all of these championship fights, you had three title fights. And all of them ended in the second round except for Thug Rose, which was in the first. And that was the one that you really didn't expect to go uh, you know, it, it, you, you didn't expect it to end in the first. I will tell you that. I expected that one to go very far into it. Uh, but yeah, Thug Rose, fantastic. Uh, all of the talk about uh, how bad communism is and whatnot that she did before the fight, you know, obviously she didn't mean it towards the fighter herself, but it was a, a fun rivalry buildup. And, and this is big time. This is a big, big, big thing. You know, Rose Namajunas, the first female ever to lose her title and then regain it. That's a fairly big deal. Um, in the other fight, you know, Valentina uh, Shevchenko uh, knocks out Jessica Andrade, and that was fun, you know, another fun fight. But the way that Valentina was able to... I, I don't even know what the move is, but she basically took both of her arms both of Jessica's arms away from her and just hit her until the ref called the fight. It was ridiculous to watch. Uh, the Chris Weidman fight, that was a lot of fun uh, against Uriah Hall. I say fun. Obviously, it was grotesque. It was strange. It was only fun because it's something that you just do not see. For those that did not watch the fight, this thing lasted 17 seconds. Uriah Hall is the first fighter in UFC history to win a fight without throwing a single strike. He did not throw one punch. Weidman kicked him, and his shin split. Like, he fractured his shin immediately 
upon kicking him. It was like he he kicked a a brick shit house. Is what I told Chris over at his place the other night. It it looked like he kicked a pile of bricks and it it broke his leg off. I mean, it was the it was gruesome. It was gross, but it was. I didn't even know. I, I couldn't watch it again. It was that bad. It, it looked like Dak Prescott's injury. I mean, it was unbelievable, the fact that we actually saw this in person. And I I had no idea what to think. I could not believe it. Obviously, uh, big MMA fans watched Anderson Silva do the same thing against Wideman. I mean, it was, it was really strange. It was the same guy. I mean, the odds of this are billions to one that it would happen in the same ring or in the same octagon uh, as as the same fighter, we'll say that, you know, because Weidman had Anderson Silva do it and break his leg, and now Weidman broke his own leg doing it to somebody else. I mean, it's just the 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 story behind it's just bananas. Uh, and then finally, the first one, Anthony Smith TKOs uh, Jimmy Crute with a leg kick that looked like it just caused all kinds of nerve damage or something. I mean, it it looked like uh looked like Bambi out there trying to walk for the first time. Uh, Crute, like, wanted to continue fighting. But there was no way that he could keep fighting because he couldn't even feel his leg. He had no idea. It was so bad, that leg kick that Smith did to him. And Smith, you know, now 50 fights in, I mean, he is ridiculous. He's a lot of fun. So that was a, that was a hell of a fight. Hell of a night, hell of a, a card, everything. This was awesome, and it is just the beginning. You know, obviously, we've got uh, May 8th, Corey Sanhagen and TJ Dillashaw, and that's an ESPN fight night. I mean, that's a, that's a free one. You know, you'll be able to watch that one without doing pay-per-view. And then the next pay-per-view, Charles Oliveira against Michael Chandler, and then uh, Diaz against Edwards, Tony Ferguson, and um, uh, Darius. I mean, we, we got some big-time stuff coming up. And and then, of course, you still got Conor McGregor coming in. You got the big fight with, uh, with Izzy in June. You got all kinds of stuff coming up in UFC. If you are an MMA fan, this is the big time. This is where it gets legit. So I am stoked for these next couple of months. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen in UFC. The story of the night ended up not being so much the fighters. It ended up being Jake Paul, of all people, which drove me nuts. I'm I'm not the biggest Jake Paul fan. I'm sure some of you guys heard me talking after the Triller uh, experience last week. I didn't watch it, but I went back and watched a bunch of the clips afterwards because he KO'd Ben Askren uh, for Triller Fight Night, whatever it was, Jake Paul's third ever boxing match. I mean, it's it, that was just a, a complete sideshow. It was. It, it, I think Dana White actually called it a sideshow. It was a circus. It's ridiculous. It, you got uh, Justin Bieber singing. You got Snoop Dogg commentating. You got Pete Davidson going out there, you know, interviewing fighters, and what, it's just ridiculous. Like it's a, I, I I don't get it. It's not fighting. It's not. It's not a. It, I guess maybe this is what boxing has become. I guess, but the amount of money that you have to pay these guys to get them to show up for something like this is absurd, and you know is what it is. But. Now, now we have gotten to where Jake Paul has apparently talked shit about Daniel Cormier, I guess. On some podcast at some point, Cormier started talking back to him, and then when Jake Paul showed up, Cormier got in his face. Security kind of broke it up before it escalated. Uh, Dana White, afterwards in his press conference, ended up spending a little time talking about Triller and the Jake Paul stuff. Uh, it, I, I don't know why you... I mean, this guy's plan has worked out brilliantly. He knocks out Ben Askren, who is a retired, washed-up UFC fighter who won nothing in the UFC. I mean, he, he beat Robbie Lawler, but, like, okay. You know, <laughs> other than that, he got ended by Masvidal and lost another fight and then was out. You know, he he won some championships before, but he's he's older, and he is definitely not a boxer. He's never been a striker, ever. This was a hand-picked opponent for Jake Paul. So, of course, he was going to knock him out, and it... And all, for all intents and purposes, it looked fixed. You know, it looked like it was, you know, the fix was in, it was done, because when Askren is walking out, he's smiling, and he and his wife are happy, and, like, there's no shame in the loss at all. Like, a, a real fighter, you know, feels a little bit of shame when you lose. I understand the respect card, and everybody knows how to lose, but, man, you don't walk around, like, grinning the way that Askren did. Uh, you know, it, it was it was a very weird situation, but Dana White... 
of course, talking, you know, a bunch about this. Uh, it was it was strange. I pulled up one of these articles. Uh, Dana White, let's see. I've said it before. I'll say it again. This kid's done a good job of putting himself in a place to make some money, man. Uh, White said at the post-UFC 261 press conference. So, good for him. He's got you guys talking about him all the time and asking questions about him. He's got Daniel Cormier running after him, so he's doing something right. Um, he said he knocked out... Uh, Oh, hold on. Heels often do the biggest business in combat sports, so the question of whether White might work with Paul wasn't an unusual one, but the UFC executive quickly shot that down. He knocked out an NBA guy that was 40 years old and 30 pounds less than him. Uh, I don't even know what to think about the Askren thing. The whole thing is uh, effing mind-boggling to me, but good for him. Grab the money while you can, kid. Uh, He said, uh, uh, let's see, do you know what would happen to this guy? He ain't fighting in the UFC. You're getting me effing talking about this guy again. He's getting hand-picked opponents, and God knows what else is going on with that whole effing thing. There is a market for that, but that's not what I do. People want to see that, and it's great, and this kid's going to make a couple of bucks before this ride is over. It's just not what I do. What I do is what happened tonight. What happened tonight is we sold this place out. It was packed. The numbers that you're hearing that they did are full of shit. They're absolutely full of shit. They didn't pull those kind of numbers at all. Not even close. Tonight, what happened here tonight is what I do. It's the best versus the best. It... It is a crazy thing to think about because the reported numbers are that Jake Paul and Ben Askren did 1.5 million pay-per-view buys. There is a lot of hype around the the guy. He has millions upon millions of YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook followers, all that. Like, his social media following is absurd. But are there really that many people willing to spend 50 bucks to watch him box. I just, I I don't buy it, but we'll never actually know the real numbers because they're not going to release. Driller gets to release whatever numbers they want to. They could say that they they sold 3 million pay-per-views. That doesn't mean it was true, but they can release whatever they want to. So when Jake Paul comes out and says they did 1.5 million pay-per-view buys at 50 bucks a pop, I... Nah, I just I'm not gonna buy it because you you expect me to believe that you drew almost what Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier did back in February. That that doesn't seem legit. Doesn't seem legit to me. So I don't know what to make of it. Um, you know, it, it's interesting that his plan is working out perfectly because Cormier is talking about him. BJ Penn, who hasn't fought in a little while, is talking about, hey, Triller, sign me up. I want to box this kid. I'll knock him out in the first round. Like, all of these MMA guys are all talking about Jake Paul now just because he knocked out a retired UFC fighter. That's crazy to me. Like, this guy is a boxer. He's going to handpick who he wants to fight, and that's it. He's not going to fight anybody that's real. He's not going to fight anybody legit. But all of his fame, all of his notoriety continues growing. You've got Dana White talking about him after a a three-title fight card. And Dana White is having to spend time answering questions about Jake Paul. The hype train is real. It is absolutely real, and it continues on. It's it's crazy, but this is what boxing is. There is no uh, oversight commit. There's anybody can get into it that wants to. Like, anybody. You You can set up your own boxing rink in your backyard and charge pay per view for it. And if people want to buy it, then they'll buy it. Like it, it's crazy to think about. Crazy to think about. So, um, along with that, you know, we had big news where Dana admitted or or explained that Nick Diaz might be coming back to fight. He has not fought since 2015. Uh, Anderson Silva was was caught with some banned substance. Nate Diaz or Nick Diaz was uh, was busted with marijuana or whatever. So his last fight was technically a no contest. That was strange. You know, whatever. Um, he has not won a fight since 2011. I mean, it, it's pretty crazy. Before that Anderson Silva fight, he had lost two straight. Well, one to GSP and one to uh, 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 Condit, I believe. So, you know, it, I would love to see him fight again. It's been a very long time, but he has a massive, massive fan base. Of course, his brother, Nate Diaz, who has made quite the name for himself as well uh, with the BMF belt and, and the McGregor fights and all that good stuff. Uh, the Stockton Slap. Everybody knows all about this. Everybody loves Nate Diaz, and the old heads love Nick Diaz, and I am pumped for it. I would love to see it. They're talking about him fighting a uh, uh, Kamzat, and I am I'm stoked. I would love to see it. 
So UFC, MMA, there is a lot going on in this world right now. Boxing, not so much, but, you know, obviously we'll see. The Jake Paul thing is a circus, whatever, but there's hype around it. So, you know, we will see what ends up happening with it. But I, I love it. I love hearing more about MMA. The sport continues to grow. The way that Dana White runs his business, I respect it immensely. His Chris had me listen to his interview with uh, uh, Bill Simmons, and it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So if you haven't listened to that, go and listen to it. It was on last week's uh, Bill Simmons show. But, uh, but good stuff, man. Absolutely good stuff. It was great to see that many people back in an environment like that. Just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I can't wait for the summer. More big UFC fights coming through. It's going to be a good time. Let's move on from there, and let's discuss some NFL news right quick. And over the last few days, the Kansas City Chiefs traded their first, third, fourth, and a 2022 fifth-round pick to the Ravens for Pro Bowl tackle Orlando Brown Jr. Now, this should not come as a gigantic surprise because the Ravens have kind of had him on the block for a little while anyway. One, the Chiefs absolutely needed offensive line help, and he ain't going to get it with the 31st pick in the draft. It, it just ain't happening. Uh, but it was it was perfect for the Ravens because they had moved him to the other tackle position. I believe he was playing right tackle, and he wanted to play left tackle. Like he had told his father he was going to play left tackle, uh, all this different stuff. He thought that he was a left tackle, and he tweeted about it several times. And once he tweeted about it, and he kind of made a fuss about, hey, I don't want to be playing on this side. I am this. Once he did that, the Ravens were looking for any kind of a deal to get him out of there so long as it made sense. Because remember, this is a Pro Bowl tackle. This guy is legit. If you are the Chiefs, it is absolutely worth it to give up three of your first four draft picks to make sure that you have got your offensive line uh, sewn up. I think, it's, I think it's a smart move. Absolutely smart move. It doesn't get any better than that. The Ravens get a lot more draft capital get ways to build around that team that they have already built. They are still a fantastically well-coached team and a really good team and a super talented team, even without Orlando Brown Jr. So, I think I think this was a smart move on both sides. The Ravens get more bites at the apple. The Chiefs don't need more bites at the apple. They just needed to shore up the offensive line, and both succeeded in what they were trying to get done. And I am so happy, by the way, that we are getting more of these trades done before draft night. Now, I can only imagine it's going to be mayhem on draft night, but we have had so many things happen with draft picks leading up to it. It feels like more than usual. I haven't done the, the math. I haven't gone back and researched to see if it actually is more, but it feels like we're getting some of the bigger stuff out of the way. And, and that way we can come in prepared to the draft, you know, for the draft night special, all that good stuff. I, I, I think that's good. I think it's good to go on and, and have this stuff knocked out, and that way we are prepped. We are expecting what we can expect. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, let's move on from there. Uh, before we do, let me go ahead and tell you, if you are not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe for us. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, please. Please, 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 please. I would certainly appreciate that. Chris and I both appreciate the support, of course. Make sure you are subscribed, that you like the video, Jump in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts on the UFC stuff. I want to I want to hear your thoughts on the Chiefs uh, and the Ravens trade. And now, uh, oh, also, share out the show. That would certainly help us out. So just tell a friend about it, whatever you need to do. But that would certainly help a lot. The Apple reviews, all that good stuff. Y'all know what to do to help out the show. We would certainly appreciate any of it. Uh, Rob Gronkowski goes back to Arizona over the weekend. And he is going to be, or was was going to be, whatever you want to call it, was a uh, a coach for the spring game. And when he came back, they brought him out in an old Arizona uniform, and they had a helicopter flying above uh, the Bearcat Stadium in Tucson. And they had this man catch a football dropped out of a helicopter from 600 feet above the stadium Took three tries. The video is really fun. If you hadn't seen it, go to Arizona Football's uh, Twitter page, and they've got it there. But, yeah, go check this thing out. It, it's pretty nuts. I would imagine that that football had to be, uh, I mean, it had to be moving really, really, really fast. 
by the time I got down there. So I was I was a little bit surprised that he caught it. But at on the other hand, what is it about Guinness Book of World Records records? I don't get it. Chris and I have talked about this a, a hundred times, it feels like, and I don't understand what the purpose of actually doing this is. Do you get paid for it? Do you get endorsements? Do you get anything other than, like, your name in a book and then somebody else will try it later on and break it? And I mean, I, I don't understand. Like, if you want your name in a book, you can write a book. It, or you can make friends with somebody that's an author. Or so, I mean, it, there's a lot of different ways to get your name in a book. It probably matters more than this one. I don't know of that many people that sit around and read the Guinness Book of World Records. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I just don't understand it. May, hopefully one of you could explain it to me. Jump in the chat. Tell me. Ex or the comments. Whatever it is. Explain this to me because I do not understand why it is such a big deal to break a Guinness Book of World Records for something that you don't do regularly. Something that's not a sporting event. Something that's not, you know, who cares how many rubber bands you can build a uh, rubber band ball with like all of these different ridiculous things just make no sense to me and hopefully maybe all of you can explain it to me I just I, I don't it doesn't make sense and I don't I don't know that it ever will maybe my head is is too logical for that that's not a, a put down I'm just saying all right Moving on, we got two more things. The Mortal Kombat movie came out on HBO Max over the weekend, and it's in theaters as well. Obviously, I've already got HBO Max, so that is where I was going to be watching it. I watched Godzilla vs. Kong on it. I watched uh, the new Justice League uh, Snyder Cut thing on it. I watched um, I watched Big Bang Theory on it. And now I have watched Mortal Kombat. I stayed up until 2 o'clock in the morning after the UFC fight, which, by the way, was done. The whole card was done by like 11.25. <laughs> it's absurd. Because none of them got out of the second round. It's stupid. Uh, but I was I was in a fighting mood. My wife was still up trying to get some work done. And I sat up and watched the new Mortal Kombat movie. And I got to tell you, I'm a pretty big fan. Now, I'm a guy, right? I'm, I'm It's Pat McAfee would call it. I'm a stooge. Like, I just, I enjoy ridiculous things. And this movie, so long as you never go into it with the uh, anticipation that there is any kind of a real uh, good plot line or you expect anything to make sense or anything like that, if you're just going into this looking for the characters that you saw in the video game when you were a kid and looking for some gruesome, violent fights and some ridiculous CGI, like really good you know, graphics for the most part, then you are going to get what you paid for. You are going to enjoy this. It, it's kind of the same thing that they did with Godzilla versus Kong, where, okay, we're going to leave the human element a little bit out of this, and for the most part, anybody that's coming to see this movie just wants to watch a, a giant lizard fighting a giant monkey. You know, and they want to see him, like, tear a bunch of shit up. That's what they want. And that's exactly what I wanted out of Mortal Kombat. You know, Shang Tsung and Raiden and Scorpion versus Sub-Zero and, like, all this different crap, like... It's exactly what they give you. It is awesome. And, and if you haven't played the game, there is enough of a plot line and enough of an explanation at the beginning to at least get you invested in the movie. I thought it was really well done. So I'm, I'm not surprised that it was, you know, it was basically, for lack of a better word, a dude movie. But I would 100% watch it again. I would turn it on and, and just leave it, you know, running in the background or whatever. I would even sit down, if my son were a little older, I would sit down and just watch all the fight scenes. It's, it's the people that used to enjoy, like, kung fu movies. Like, that's, that's what this is. Only uh, they try and be serious, but the acting isn't that good. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's a lot of fun. So... If you are looking for a recommendation for it, if you're looking for somebody, you know, to push you over the edge to go see it or to watch it on HBO Max, yeah, do it. Do yourself a favor. It's a lot of fun. It, if you have low expectations, it's going to be a good time, and it is well worth your time. So go ahead and check that out. Finally, we will close out with a news of the weird story. And I got to tell you, this one, this one was a lot of fun to read. A lot of fun to read. The headline from April 22nd is Turtle Crashes Through Windshield on Florida Highway and Survives. Now, let me read you just a touch of this. Uh, a turtle crashed through the windshield of a car on a Florida highway and struck a 71-year-old woman in the head. 
but both the woman and the reptile are expected to be okay. The Port Orange Police Department said a woman called 911 on Wednesday to report she had been driving on Interstate 95 when an object crashed through her windshield and struck her passenger, her 71-year-old mother, in the head. A driver who stopped to help during the 911 call identified the object that came through the glass as a turtle. <laughs> the 911 caller's mother was taken to Halifax Health Medical Center in Daytona Beach, where doctors determined a cut above her eye was not a serious injury. She is expected to make a full recovery. Uh, Officer Andre Fleming, a police spokesman, said, Firefighters discovered the turtle was alive and apparently free of serious injuries, suffering only scratch marks to its shell. I mean, hell, it's a protective shell. That's what it's for. Uh, Fleming said firefighters released the turtle into the nearby woods. The driver of the vehicle said she didn't see the turtle until it was in the air and falling toward her windshield. Police said the animal may have been thrown into the air by a nearby vehicle. All right, first off, a turtle on the interstate flies through somebody's windshield. It would make sense that it was thrown by uh, a nearby vehicle. They don't go any more in-depth into that. I would love to hear more about this story. I, I wish that I could get uh, the officer or, the, hell, the woman driving at somebody uh, to, uh, to call in on the show and give us some more information about this. But I'm curious. Fleming said the firefighters released the turtle into the nearby woods. They basically checked this dude out and, and just let it go. I mean, you didn't want to, like, keep this thing around for a little bit just to make sure it couldn't, you know, fly? Like, I mean, <laughs> have we not seen crazier shit happen? I mean, we just had aliens confirmed, for God's sake. Like, we, we have had a lot of things go on, and you just going to let this turtle, like, mosey back on out into the, into the woods? I think I probably would have kept that thing, examined it a little bit, you know? And not, not just, okay, it looks all right, let's, let's let it go. Like, this could be a, a crazed, demonic turtle, and we have no idea. Like, because they didn't keep it, and now it's stuck in the woods somewhere. I mean, there's no telling what this thing could be. So, you know, a Congress and, and all of these others really did confirm UFOs, and, and we believe that there are extraterrestrials and, and whatever else. Who knows what this was, but they didn't keep the turtle? That's, I, the, the thought of that actually happening as I'm driving to vacation, I'm, I'm going to the beach later on this summer, like later on in July. I'm going to have to be on the lookout for damn turtles now. I can't imagine driving 70 miles an hour down the interstate. You're headed to the beach. You're headed wherever. And a friggin' turtle goes flying through your windshield. Could you imagine this? I, it, it drives me nuts. And now I know that there is that, uh, that deranged turtle on the loose out in the Everglades or wherever the hell it is. And, and they did nothing to it. It's a criminal-ass turtle. And they just let it go. Just let it go. It, it, poor woman's windshield is smashed. We're going to hear more reports about this. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All right. We're going to get out of here. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you for listening for sure. Thank you for watching. If you are, uh, make sure you hit that like button. Hit, hit, make sure you uh, subscribe and all that. If you are listening to the podcast, leave a nice five-star review. That would certainly help us. And, uh, and we read those on the show every now and then. So you want to get something read on the show? Jump in that way, or you can always dive in on the Monday and Wednesday live shows. Uh, this Monday show, got no idea of what time it's going to be. We got some things that popped up at the time that we typically do it. So we will see. We will see what happens with that. But uh, but as always, you know, you, you guys know what's going on. Every morning, you will have a podcast in your feed, and we appreciate you for listening to that and sharing the show out and telling your friends all the good stuff. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash ncaaf. And make sure and tune in on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, right here on the YouTube channel and the next morning for the podcast. And we will be going through the live NFL Draft first round. It's going to be a good time with our buddies from the Westlot Pirates. Go check them out, westlotpirates.com. And, uh, and yeah, I cannot wait. Cannot wait. With that said, let's dive out of here. You guys take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully... All of your tickets cash. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.